Hello everyone, this is Helena Hart, and today I'm here with my friend and fellow coach, Eva Medelik. Welcome Eva, thank you so much for talking with me again today. Oh, I'm so excited to be on the other side of the interview today, Helena. This is gonna be great. I am so excited. For those of you who don't know Eva, she is a relationship style success coach who helps highly driven women use that drive to really restore and maintain the passion, connection, and intimacy in their love life. And I hope I said that right because that is so important. Did I? <laughs> Yes. Fantastic. And that's actually what we're going to be talking about in this video today, how to restore that passion and connection and closeness that can so easily fade away, especially in long-term relationships. But really what we're going to be talking about will help you no matter where you're at in your love life, right, Eva? So let's just jump right in. What are some uh, like common struggles or complaints you hear from women who are at that place where they're really wanna, wanting to like restore that intimacy and closeness? Well, first of all, a lot of them come to me, they're exhausted and they don't know what to do. So when you are a highly driven woman, you're always in the energy of doing, which is very masculine and nothing's wrong with that. However, when it comes to your relationship, it really doesn't translate. What translates in a relationship is the being and the being in a feminine energy. Now, men and women both have this feminine energy, so I'm not being sexist here. It's just that to just kind of relax and receive and receive love and feel love and be loved without always doing, 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 and in that perfectionist and that drive that most often exhausts us. And so what happens is when you're in that driven energy all the time and you bring that to your relationship, there's no real coming together or relaxing. And then that gap in your connection starts to widen the longer you're together. And then all you talk about is what you have to do, what needs to be accomplished. And you've got that, that drive to, to keep up appearances and to have things and to do things, but not really to be in relationships. So the common problem or complaint or frustration that women come to me with is they're tired, they want to be intimate with their spouse, but so much time has passed before deciding to do something about it that they don't know what the next step is. You know, how do you get that back? We're so far apart now. That is so true. I hear that so much. And obviously, who cannot relate to that, right? You get busy and life gets in the way and, and that can be like the first thing to go. And something I always say is, is the connection you have with the man is like the number one most valuable asset in your relationship. So I love everything you said. We obviously have so much synergy around this. <laughs> so, so much about feminine energy, right? So how would you help someone you know, who's at that place start to turn things around? Well, one of the things I coach around is our relationship style. We are all imprinted with a certain style from childhood that we bring into our relationships. So for example, um, if you tend to avoid confrontation, I call it your, your evader, your evading tendencies. So instead of confronting or powerfully asking for what you need, you just kind of go with the flow, don't rock the boat, um, just accept what is. And what happens over time, you start to build up resentment in your relationships. When you really don't peel back the layers, find out what your relationship style is, and then consciously manage your mind about, especially women do this, he should know what I need. <laughs> he should know. And, but I'm not going to tell him. And you're just going to avoid saying something, but you're going to leave clues or hints. Well, let me tell you something. Men are not good at picking up on clues and hints. <laughs> They're just not. Yeah. So, and it's nothing wrong with powerfully requesting what you want so that you don't build up this anger, resentment, and disappointment in your relationship. So instead of avoiding coming out and powerfully requesting what you need, just say it. Just say it. And you can say it in a way that actually makes your man feel like he's really supporting you. 
So that's one of the things that I work on with my clients is learning how to powerfully ask in a way that is super supportive and loving and non-judgmental and not take out the garbage, load the dishwasher, <laughs> you know, that kind of thing. I love that. I call it making requests from your feminine energy. Yes. Very important skill that a lot of people, I've certainly been the evader. I, I'm someone who tends to like uh, want to avoid conflict and not rock mm -hmm. the boat. And so many women can relate to that, right? Would you mind giving like a quick example of how someone could make a request in a way that would make a man feel like her hero or feel supported or like he's a supporter rather than something that might come across as like nagging or controlling? You know, one of the things that I've done in my relationship, I mean, my, you know how we have these triggers that people will look or say or do something and you just kind of want to wring their necks, especially if you've been married a long time. But one of the things that I've done with my husband is um, if he has said something that hurt me, and instead of me not wanting to um, confront and evade, but hold in the resentment, what I'll say to him is, look, I, I, I need your support. Can you support me in something? And do you have time to talk right now? Because I don't wanna just jump in on something if he's busy doing something or in a different energy where he's focused on something else. You always wanna think about the timing. First of all, of and just ask permission is now a good time because I need your support with something. And what I've said to him, I said, look, I know it wasn't your intention, but when you said or did or forgot to do X, Y, Z, this is how I felt. And I know that you didn't intend for me to feel that way. And I just wanted you to know how it made me feel and ask for your support in doing X, Y, Z. I remember, I don't know how much time we have left, but just really quickly, there was a time when I was training for an endurance challenge. I was getting up and going to the gym at five o'clock. And I remember at a couple of parties we were at, my husband was saying, my wife is crazy. She's getting up at five and she's doing all of this. And it just made me feel bad. Mm -hmm. And I just went to him and I said, look, I know it wasn't your intention and I know you meant to make a joke, but this is how I feel when you say that. It actually hurts me that you calling me crazy when I actually have a goal and I'm doing the action steps necessary to achieve my goal. The next time we were out, it was a different conversation. I'm so proud of my wife, oh. what she's doing. Mm -hmm. And it was done in a way that I didn't want him to feel bad because I know his intention wasn't to hurt me. So I got to look at the intention behind the statement. He just thought he was being funny. So those are a couple of examples I can give. That was such a perfect example. I, I love that so much. So I know something you talk about a lot, which I love is, is how someone shows up in all areas of their life, like work or in relationships, spills over into their love life or with their romantic partner. And the evader was a great example of that. And that I love that tool you gave to, to not be such an evader. <laughs> I'm yeah. that, right, right? Um, what are some other ways? I'm just curious. Like, like do, are there some other ways like the evader that people might show up in all areas of your life and it spills over into their relationships? Well, there's also, um, I like to call it, um, people pleasing. Oh yeah. definitely. You know, and that you, you lose your real authenticity. Um, and just saying things to avoid conflict that may not necessarily be true is not really helpful in having the other person grow as well. Right. And so I like to say you, you can be honest, but you can create a, a safe space to be honest. And I, and I like to put couples, and like I do in my own marriage, we, we get together, we sit down and we talk. And one of the first things I do is acknowledge Acknowledge what's great. Don't just start in. Like, I need to talk to you about what you did. And then, da, 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 da. just, uh, I love you. I love how you do this. I love what you do this. I love the shape of your butt. You know, like, whatever, it, <laughs> whatever it is, just really acknowledge and elevate the person. And then say, There's something I really want to share with you um, that. Like I said, like I know it's not your intention for this, or this is how I felt, and not get into to people pleasing around around it, but really powerfully stand in your power and powerfully request what you need, but also ask. 
how can I support you? What do you need from me that I'm not giving you? And that's something a people pleaser will just guess and start throwing things at people without actually asking, does this support you if I were to do this? Or like, how do you want me to listen to you? Do you want me to just listen and not say anything? I like to call it generous listening. Do you want me to listen to respond? Do you want advice or support? Or you, do you just want to vent and have somebody hear you? And that's when it becomes about really both of us um, tending to each other's needs and not, because, you know, I'm pretty bold and controlling and I want to give you advice. I'm a coach. I'm going to tell you this is what I think and this is what you should do. But that's not necessarily what the other person whoever's in your relationship, it could be your children, your parents, your coworkers, your employer, your employees, sometimes they just need to be heard and listened to and felt that somebody's really hearing and acknowledging them. That is beautiful. I, I love everything you said. Something I always say is acknowledgement and, and appreciation are like the fuel that men run on in relationships, yes. yeah. right? So I love like starting with acknowledgement and, and like, what can we do to work this out? So, so both our needs get met. It's like you're, you're inviting him into his masculine energy to help like solve the problem. Something I've really found is that men are, are much more invested in, in making a change or doing something differently. If they feel like they were like part of the solution, right? Yes. Rather than yes. just like, Oh, this is an obligate. I'm doing this cause she wants me to do this. And it feels more like an obligation. Right. So I, that's beautiful. I love everything you said. And for everyone watching too, please type your experiences with this in the comment section. Are you an evader or, or do you tend to be a people pleaser or someone who's kind of coach like, like, like you <laughs> and myself too? Of course. Yeah, controller. Uh, my background's in psychology. It's like I have this urge to help people and, and stuff like that. And, and it's not that. A man might like that, but it does nothing for romance, right? That kind of helping energy or over-functioning, over-giving just kills a man's feelings of attraction to you. I've certainly found that to be true. Um, so I love everything you said. So yeah, everyone watching, type in your experiences with this. How is, how is the way you show up in your life reflected back to you in your relationships with men? I, this is just across the board, right? Yeah. So this was fantastic, Eva. Thank you so much. And I definitely wanted to mention uh, your summit that's coming up called Closing the Intimacy Gap. Uh, it's something that I'm going to be a part of. We just finished recording my interview for that series. Oh my God. It's amazing. you got to watch it, guys. She knocks it out of the park in this interview. So I just had to say that. I love this. Oh, thank you so much. <laughs> yeah, so much fun. So much fun. There's, there's going to be a bunch of experts, right? Um, yes. And it's going to be starting soon and it's totally free. So I'm going to include links to that in the description right below this video and in the comment section. So Eva, tell us a little bit about this summit and what people can gain from it. Absolutely. The name of this, the, the online show is called Closing the Intimacy Gap, How to Restore and Maintain the Passion, Connection, and Fun in Your Relationships. Um, and I throw fun in there really, really purposefully and intentionally because, you know, we get so busy in the doing of life that we forget to just stop and be and have fun. And that's so important to enhancing, restoring and maintaining the intimacy and connection. So I have um, experts such as yourself that really will support you in finding out where those blocks, where you're falling short and how you can really start on the path to, to reconnecting your relationships. And if you're not in relationship, also, how do you need to change and your thought process and manage your mind so that you can start attracting the relationship of your dreams as well? So it's all about um, body language. We're also going to be talking about if you're in a relationship that's really not serving you, when it's time to make that change and to leave, how to attract the relationship of your dreams, how to, to, um, the triggers, how to manage triggers in your relationship. That's a big one because I, I am trigger happy. <laughs> I have a better word. And so, yeah, part of my ongoing work with transformation and personal development is really controlling what triggers me. And I find that I am less exhausted sweating the little stuff 
than I am. Just, just let it go. And so we will learn how to let things go that normally would upset and frustrate us and really put a block to our connection to our spouse. So it's going to be amazing. I'll have over 21 experts and, you know, there'll be something for everyone in the show. I love it. It's just going to be so valuable, just really no matter where you're at in your love life, right? I know um, the interview I did with you for your series was geared towards, you know, how to stop attracting the wrong kind of man. <laughs> so you yes. can just, right? <laughs> or bring your man closer than ever if you're in a relationship, right? Mm -hmm. So there's just going to be so much value, so many experts, and it's all 100% free, right? So everyone, please check that out. I'll post a link in the description right below this video. And when is the summit uh, starting? It's, it's launching uh, January 16th, and all of our experts have freebies to give away too, so you don't want to miss out on any of that. And it'll run for about three weeks, a little over three weeks. So it's going to be Perfect. amazing. It'll be, yeah, it'll be really awesome. Good the bundle package of all of the interviews if you want it to so that you can watch them at your leisure, but we'll release one per day starting January 16th. Yeah, amazing. So 21 free videos, free gifts. Everyone should definitely go check that out. Eva, thank you so much. And I can't wait to talk with you again soon. Thank you so much for having me, Helena. Bye, everyone.